Welcome back to another episode of the Youth Ministry Booster Podcast. My name is Zach Oregon here in the garage with my best friend. Chad Higgins, still, always. Still and always. Still and always is nice. I'll appreciate that, Chad. I wanted to tell you, though, uh, I'm looking forward to some of our summer months recording because it's not going to be so cold in the garage. Oh, but it's going to be blistering <laughs> It's going to be hot. Chad's going to be tank top by the end of the summer. Mm, nope, nope, not <laughs> We'll that. see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, summer's <laughs> out. <laughs> Patreon fans only. Oh, no, no. That's the... Pay a little extra to see that. But we are really excited to talk about that topic today because it is summer camp themed because it's summer camp season. And I think for a lot of folks, they want to know, Chad Higgins, how many camps are you going to this summer? Mm. It, it is your favorite thing. Camp is your favorite thing. Yeah. So uh, I, I've i only accepted to go to three camps this summer. Okay. So A conservative three. That's good. Yeah. So I'm only doing three camps. Uh, and so that, yeah, it'll be... Okay. It'd be really awesome. Any any tour stops people could see you at said camps if they're like, you know, just out in the camp circuit, out in the Winnebago, wanting to see old Chad Higgins on the road. Where, where are you going to be at this summer? Uh, well, the, They're all just, they're, yeah, you can't get into the campgrounds. Well, I know, but just tell the folks where you're at. You're going to be somewhere fun? Are these, fun, these new camps, fun camps? Yeah, like, so I'll be, one of the camps is in North Carolina. Okay. One of the camps is in place. Florida, and Ooh. then one of them is in Oklahoma. Okay, all right. So, yeah. Trekking, trekking in the Southeast. Oh, yeah, That's good times, right. man. Okay, okay. What about you? You're going to be a couple places. You're even doing one of our camps. I right? am doing one of our camps. I'm really excited. Uh, we are doing... Uh, I'm in Texas a lot this summer, okay. which the Oklahoma and me is trying to sort that out. Uh, but really excited for our SBTC friends and getting to hang out and kind of doing the trifecta of they've got a camp in Corpus Christi, okay. camp in Austin, um, and they have a camp, ironically, in Gloria to New Mexico. Okay. I guess you're you know, doing all three of those? Doing, doing, doing all three. I did all three. Yeah, I did all three. Uh, and then I get to stay an extra week in Glorietta uh, for our student life friends. So, student nice. life camp goers in Glorietta. I get to actually live in Santa Fe, New Mexico for 10 days this summer. Fun. The family's coming out for it. So, it's, you know, we're full tilt camp boogie man happening you're Dude, like the so. other we're gonna be splitting up that's right splitting it up uh we're still gonna bring you great podcast stuff uh, every other week this summer that's one of the things that no how do we know <laughs> we're going to it's going to be great people are going to love it because people have asked in the summer they need a little fun i mean yeah this this is the kids are asleep on the van what do i listen to that's safe and clean and hilarious so i think we, got we commit now oh, okay all of our episodes this will be our last like s- not serious yeah, but yeah, like yeah content for i think the rest of the summer just fun just fun just fun so if there's a fun thing that we haven't talked about that you want us to talk about get it in for summer as wild and crazy as you want it to be uh i mean it may be the return of shark week at some point this summer a lot of folks have missed quick what's your favorite shark a tiger shark (laughs) hammerhead it's got the best face (laughs) hammerhead That's an amazing shirt. <laughs> hammerhead <laughs> sharks. Love my they face. They have the best face. <laughs> it's a face that only a mother hammerhead could love. Uh, you know, I mean, sharks. Uh, but other weird things. We've had folks that have asked about some of the weird games that we've played before and stuff. Uh, I'm uh, I'm totally down to de- dedicate a whole episode uh, to the Exodus Relay or the Sasquatch Hunt amazing. for those that have yeah, curious yeah. questions. So we're excited to hang out with you all. It's going to be a fun summer. Uh, we're going to share more things about that are coming up later this fall. But I feel like for some folks, this might be a little bit of a crunch. Mm, uh, they may be feeling, feeling it. Feeling it. I mean, it's we're after Mother's Day. We're after most likely most graduations. Maybe a few graduation parties hanging out there. And all eyes are towards June and July summer activities. Uh, last couple years, COVID concerns and cautions have maybe shuffled the deck a little bit. But a lot of folks are heading to camp in the next few weeks. And we have heard from some of our friends maybe hoping to take a few more to camp than they currently have signed up right now. So if that's you, if you're watching or listening to this and you're like, I need six more students to come to camp. If you're feeling the pinch or the pressure, Papa Chad's got a little bit of wisdom. We want to share a little bit of insight, maybe to assuage some of those fears, but also maybe some of those actions you could take. I think the crisis of, I need a few more kids signed up for camp 
is a perpetual fear that most will have at some season or seasons of ministry, and we wanted to address it because we are here with you riding co-pilot talking about it. So Chad, set up a little more. You're kind of bringing this question because you this was like the well, pastoral we've moment. Heard it. Yeah. We've seen it. We've heard it. We wanted to address it <coughs> as specifically as possible for, for our friends in ministry. Yeah. So. And, and I think in... So to clarify, because yeah. there's I think there's two sides to this okay. and this feeling. Um, one, you have just the like... We want to take as many kids as we can to right. camp. Like pack them up. The more yeah, the better. We, yeah, yeah. How do we get a few more? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. But then there's also the side that depending on the type of camp you go to, the way your registration works, even the way your costs work, that you may have like a pre committed some numbers. Yeah, a lots, number yeah, yeah. that you have to get to, right. or your church is on the hook. Yeah. Um, and so I, I would say the second part of this is the one that we want to identify a little bit more. In the in the, the the feelings of the urgency. Correct. If you've already got a bunch of kids and you'd love to have a few more, sure. I love you, forget you. We'll see you this time next year with some things on that. Yeah. This one goes out for all the listeners that are like, if I don't get five more, then we're out five deposits. Yeah. That's, I think, the first thing we're trying to talk to today. I so. also want to be thoughtful and mindful in the reality that this is going to be coming out. When, when is this? Uh, end of May. So, end of May. Uh, yeah. So, like, you may be in the spot where you're like, we leave for camp in four days. Yeah, that's right. Um, and, and so I also... We're actually on the road to camp right now. <laughs> right. I don't want this episode to fall in anybody's lap of it being like, Oh, great. Another reminder that I'm a horrible youth pastor because yeah. that is not the case. You're not. Um, we have all been, whether it's camp or somewhere, uh, another a, a D event. now that failed to fill. Sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, like, truth, 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 story time yeah. or whatever. Um, early years in ministry, we had the D now, we had the camp, both went great. Being Zach working, I was like, why not add one more thing? Mm -hmm. So we had kind of like a missions weekend. So we had like a disciple weekend, a big like evangelism camp, and like a missions weekend. And so because the other two had gone well that year before this big fall weekend, I was like, we're going to serve, we're going to do, it's going to be cheap because it's missions. So we'll spend a little extra and bring a cool, fun band out. Um, was the wrong weekend, was the wrong schedule, mm -hmm. uh, uh, had, had a concert for seven kids. Yeah, yeah it, wow. it, it happens. And it hurts. Sure. And the band looks at you and they're like, hey, man, is anybody else coming? Uh, I'm like, maybe it's a surprise. Maybe it's a surprise. <laughs> maybe it's a surprise. It's real. Uh, That's so. when you say things like, there's good, but like you're like, audience of one. That's it. <laughs> no, yeah. like, hey, you'll minister to everybody who's here yeah. by name. <laughs> by name. Um, so the the first thing, in, and once again, I don't want to pile on, yeah. but I think I think opportunities. If like you've got this, a few weeks, there's still time. Yeah, there's still some questions to ask. Yeah. I think I think opportunities like this, uh, we need to learn from. Okay, because if we don't learn from them, we'll continue to make those same. That's right. Type That's of right. Mistakes. Because um, camp is probably going to happen again next year. Sure, it is. Um, there there are a couple things that I would set up depending, and I know everybody's camp thing is different, so it's hard to talk about a situation where you know you're doing your own camp or right. you're t taking to somebody. But if you are in in a scenario where the camp that you're going requires a deposit, yep. um, the one thing that I would add that I don't think people do enough is requiring non-refundable deposits from your students that are you going to You should match some of that. Like, if they're going to ask, it's okay for you to ask Correct. to help coincide with... Because a lot of folks have drop dates for deposits. You should probably sync up your payments for yep. that as well. Uh, and that way you don't feel like, well, th they'll pay later, right? They're going to pay later. Right. Th their students with... Yeah. Yeah, it may, may not do what you want them to. You're, yeah. you're guaranteeing that you think that people are going to come that you don't know yeah. are going to come. And I think... It often, not always, but it often seems like it's a little bit easier to add some spaces yeah. or a lot of places will uh, allow you to have certain drops over a certain period of time, right. those kind of things, if Phases, you do need to come down. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but asking your people and requiring a deposit, even if it's not the full amount, and then you're able to tell your people, hey, like you're committing to this yeah. and we're we're turning your money over to the campground that we have to right. go to we're just passing it through mm -hmm. yeah yeah and, and so because i know a lot of times sometimes when we don't hit those numbers 
it, it will often happen where you'll have like that one like key student that drops out. Yeah. And then just magically all of their friends. And the ripples. Yeah. Also yeah. have family vacations that week. Thanks, Isaac. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and so uh, requiring those kind of things can help provide some of that buffer as well. Yeah. Um, I think part of it is knowing what are... What are my set costs? Yeah. And then what are my flex costs, yeah. right? What's fixed, what's variable. Correct. Yeah. And then being able to identify, okay, what is our actual budget for this? Yeah. I think a lot of times we build out budgets for events that are break even. We want to get break even. Yeah. But it actually will require a pretty good number to, to break, break even. To break even, yeah. And I think building your budget lower than higher yeah. is always a smart move yeah. because you're able to then, if you do have extra students come, awesome. you can make that experience even better yeah. instead of going, okay, what do we have to cut? Cutting, you know, hey, we were going to have this meal, maybe it's PB&J all mm. week long or whatever, having to really trim Try back. not to cut the food. <laughs> Well, or, or if you're in a place of cutting the food, okay, yeah. like I know you kind of gave that as a joking, a example. silly thing. Hopefully, but... Zach gave that as a joking example. Um, food should not be your cutting spot. Well, I'm not saying like all food. I'm just saying like the Zach's quality got of a yeah, really yeah. nice shirt. And kids don't get to have right, breakfast. Right. Well, well, I mean, they got breakfast. It was just like stale pop tarts oh. that we got at the bread store you know like the, the we went to the bread store the two-day-old bread store and we loaded up so, i don't i don't uh but there are but there are some things that and we've talked about this some of those enhancement things yeah. the the water bottle or the you know um the the bus got air conditioning instead of the non-air conditioned bus or whatever mm -hmm. like there's some of those things that just make part of the experience great and matter um that you shouldn't be trying to shave all those out as you plan, but those are like the things that are like, okay, we're in a real tight mode. Mm -hmm. The thing that I would want to share, and you, you named this in some of our pre-conversation, is don't carry this process on your own back. Mm -hmm. uh, as someone who's really prone to like shoulder all of the burden and responsibility, part of working with a campground or even planning your own camp is the opportunity to share the load. It's, uh, they're going to help take care of this. We're going to use this campground for that. Like if everything for camp from food to finances, to content, to leaders, to transportation is on your back and you don't have the team built around you, then of course it's going to feel like anything that's wrong is your fault. There's too many moving parts to just carry all of it alone. And so I think having updates with the team, even if that team is two to three people is important, like letting them know, you know, as soon as you can, as often as you can, and especially your senior leadership know, here's where we're at. And here's what we've done to try to manage it as well as we can. It's not just I don't know, man, it's looking bad this year. It's, mm. hey, we're a few behind. We've made these calls. We've sent these emails. We've connected with these folks personally. We're either waiting to hear back or this is what happened. There was a, a couple years ago, um, there was a camp that we did and like two large families both got sick because they vacationed together. And so two weeks before camp, they're both like out. And so it was one of those, like it really impacted. We lost four sponsors and eight kids because they all went, trailer camping doing or whatever at the national parks weeks before and so it jeopardized some of the plans that we had um, that's a little different because we had a plan and we lost a plan but being able to account for the changes i yeah. think a lot of leadership is being able to manage and account for the changes and the actions that we could take or we have taken yeah. that, that matter it matters yeah no i think that relational thing is really really important the, specifically talking about like senior leadership things like that and so this is my encouragement to you if you know that you you are already in a rough spot for camp. If you're fighting the uphill, don't roll the wait, ball together. Yeah, don't wait until after camp to inform your senior leadership of like where you're at. Don't open that envelope. Right, right, yeah, right, yeah, right, yeah. right. You're yeah. like, hey, uh, by the way, camp was great. Uh, uh, we went $8,000 yeah, no, no, over budget. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that, great time, though. But great, a great time. time. A great time. Uh, Had a great time. Yeah, that, that changes that conversation pretty quickly. Uh, bringing them in, because sometimes – you know, your senior leadership maybe have some ability to help, right? Yeah. Ha be able to talk to some key families, those yeah, kind of things going on. to invite. I think that those are always um, a really, really positive thing. Um, okay, so, Zach. Yeah. If you're sitting in that boat right now. Yeah. 
Let's say you're a month out from camp. Okay. We're going in July. You, I'm ready. You've you feel like, man, we need we need at least ten more students. Okay. What would be some of the things that you would do okay. that you feel like maybe you haven't done yet that could be good? Uh the first thing I would not encourage myself to not do or encourage us not to do is to totally panic. Okay. And throw everything out at once. Okay. I would get really strategic. This this is where having, you know, those five healthy documents that help manage your ministry, that roster of students. Who's already coming? Yeah. Who said no, I'm not coming, and who's giving them the love? I don't know. Right. I would start on the I don't know list. Yeah. If they if you can call and talk to their parent, that student, hey, here's the situation. Let me sell you the vision of this. Um, I, I think sometimes we advertise the event, and we don't always sell the vision. Sometimes a vision takes a phone call. Yeah. I think you start that. So you're, you're organized. Take, take an hour. Organize who you're going to call. Make some of those calls. Mm. I think this is where you can loop some of those calls with your senior leadership or your kids minister that might know the family better than you. If you feel like, I don't really have that relationship with the Normans that well, but maybe like... yeah. She does, and she can help make that call mm-hmm. because kids camp, they were there every year. They're yeah. not coming this year. Let's maybe find out more yeah, why. What happened? Uh, I think for some of your students who are really influential students, ask them if they have a friend that wants to go. Um, even if, and this is where everybody's going to have different constraints, restraints, or opportunities, even if it's like, let's bring your friend and see if we can help incentivize them to come. If 50 bucks off camp would help your friend come, is that is that is that a, a thing mm-hmm. that we could put out there for for, for Tyler and Jacob to invite some of their buddies. Uh, again, it's the, you can invite your friends and we want you to. You may have been saying, hey, invite your friends, invite your friends, but those really specific calls and invitations, not you're asking the whole ministry to bring friends. You're yeah, looking at Tyler specific. and Jacob and Ashley. Will you bring some friends? Like who's one person you could bring? Because if you get three or four of those kids that are like, you know, I, I didn't really even think I, about asking Nate to come. Yep. This is your chance for you to call Nate. Um, I think there's a little bit of the grandparent uh, who has, like, the grandkid. Maybe they don't come to your church all the time, but, man, if there's that grandkid that's there every three or four weeks and has always been a little bit distant, there is a grandmother or grandfather that would love to have their kid more connected to your ministry, even if it's... The the grandparent mode is a really good one. That is someone who wants to write a check to get their grandkid more involved in your ministry. I get it. They're one town over. They're once a monthers at best, but so are some of your other kids too. That's not wrong. Um, I think there's probably um, some students um, that are adjacent to um, some of the the other ministries you have going on. I, I think in a lot of church life, there is a youth ministry and there's some kids that sit outside that bubble. Sometimes it's because they had trouble, trouble connecting and didn't know how to find their way in. Um, camp often can be a really important opportunity to make some memories together. Uh, if you haven't directly invited them, I think this is the chance to do that. Um, but more than anything, more than anything, I think you raise the awareness that there are not just more spots left, but we got six mm. spots that we want to fill. We have eight spots we want to fill. And so it becomes a specific objective or goal yeah. together and not just the, hey, we need more kids at camp. Hey, sign up all your friends. Like, Let's make it the targeted goal. Make it a goal and specific as we can for what we're trying to do. Yeah. Uh, this was always the area where... Uh, so the one thing that a lot of youth pastors complain about is the sports stuff. This is where I think you can actually utilize some of the sports stuff. Okay, turn it on its head. Yeah, yeah, so when you have that one kid who's the baseball player, yeah, you know what I mean? And maybe they're go going blue, to camp. Go, go Blue Jays. But yeah. most of the year they're at baseball stuff. Yeah. Um, this is the opportunity to get to know their team. Invite the team. And so to literally go to that kid and be like, and, and here's how I would pitch it. Uh, hey, there's camp softball yeah. at camp. Let's crush it. Let, let's let build a team yeah. that would own everyone. Yeah. And now that kid who loves baseball yeah. wants to get all of his ki- friends to camp because yeah. they're going to dominate the, the, base, the right. softball tournament right. or whatever that looks Again, like. Again, you're not inviting them to camp generally. You're after inviving them to like, hey, let's yeah, cause bring, my, build, your, build your team, bring them into this, this team. Yeah, because for that kid, that may – they may not be at a spot where they feel real comfortable 
turning to all their friends and being like, would you like to come to church camp? Yeah. Um, but bro, we didn't know you go to church. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> well, now, now we have two lessons. Yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but to give them the easy ask for their baseball team yeah. of, Hey, there's this camp. It's going to be a lot of fun. By the way, they have softball. Yeah. If we all went our like, you know, tournament level baseball team, probably going to, probably going to crush it. Uh, as someone who on the adult team, <clears throat> Uh, the, so it was the open league at yeah. the camp that we went to. It was the four and four open league. As one of the guys who was crushed by a high school girls JV volleyball team, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure she just invited her club. A hundred percent, and they destroyed us. We and actually, it was amazing. Yeah, yeah, we actually did that back in the day. So that was your plan. That was your play. <laughs> we yeah, yeah. we would go after entire teams. Okay. Um, we want we wanted all, because. If you're going to have kids that are quasi there because of travel sports, yeah. I want to know all their friends. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, they may not be able to be there, but if, if our student ministry can be an influence on that team, the whole team, sure. Then that's a huge win. And so there was a, a volleyball team that was like that back in the day. Um, we had one, one of our young ladies was on this volleyball team that they had won three state championships in a row. They were unbelievably yeah, good. Yeah. Two of their girls had just graduated to go play Division One volleyball. Uh, and then the other one was like, she was a junior going into her senior year. She 100% went on as well. Play, yeah. uh, so w there was a big volleyball tournament that would happen every year at camp. And we were like, you know, you guys could come and crush this, yeah. right? And, and four days of mayhem. Yeah. We yeah, got yeah. their entire team to come out. Okay. And, the first game of camp volleyball was so lopsided that mm. we we literally called the huddle to all those girls and was like, okay, you're playing groups of kids that are not good. Yeah. Let them play and have fun. Yeah. Let's wait till the final day. And then destroy. To actually start running our plays again. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. they really were. They were out there oh, running plays. One, seven. Correct. You're like, uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, no. <laughs> they start calling numbers. <laughs> if they start calling numbers when you're playing volleyball against them, you're done. Like, just yeah. know you're toast. You're done. Yeah, Yeah. because yeah, one of the girls, she was legit probably like 6'2". Yeah. And could just jump out of the gym. She she went on to play volleyball at Texas A&M. Um, but, oh, her spike. Just shutters and watching you know it's one thing to watch her play against another team for a oh, state yeah, championship yeah, yeah. when she's doing that spike against a seventh grader shy eighth graders <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh no they're no. just trying to like oh no oh no <laughs> yeah yeah you're like okay let's let's pull that back yeah we can win by the just girl who's building soon. a sand castle <laughs> that gets spiked on oh i mean like yes yeah that's, yeah that student pastor is gonna have a hard time getting her to come back yeah to camp you now create a year. deficit for somebody else so good job. good job um okay but the thing that i would encourage in that go after those teams yeah um i would ask the question who who is not signed up that was signed up last sure. year? Sure. So again, work the roster yep. of the ones that you had from last year. Again, we're working with the documents that we have, the role, the roster, last year to this year. Yeah, good, good, good. This is another thing. It's a little bit too late for this, but going into next year that I really, really encourage everybody to do. Always chain your events. Yeah. What I mean by that is there should never be an event that you do in your student ministry that doesn't lead to the next thing. Yeah. And so case in point, if you had a disciple now two months ago, February, March, it's a great time to have one. That disciple now should have been the release of your camp forms at yep. the end of that. And so, or maybe the link should have gone live yep. or the email after camp was, thanks for coming to this. Let's do it again in June. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Get signed up now. Deposit. You, you, you can save X number of dollars right. if you register now. Link them up. Um, and so have those chained events that go into each other. Um, and then between those two, you're talking about different elements of camp yeah. every single week leading up to that. And so it's never the same pitch week in and week out. You may come back to certain things multiple times. Sure. 
But like one week you're talking about the wreck in the sports, the wreck in the sports, the art, the yeah. connection with others. We're away from your parents for a whole week. <laughs> like that is one point, sure. not the whole point, but there is a week of that, right? Like, Hey, yep. it's a week away from your folks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so you're, you're talking about those different things cause it's going to hit students differently of going, Oh, I want to come to that. Um, that'll be awesome. Uh, I would say, having the ability even in this time period right now if you haven't already done it make it easy to ask friends yeah what i mean by that is you want to take down as many barriers as you can that's good a lot of times it is get your kid get your friends signed up for camp well okay well what do they need to do if your kids are asking at this point what do my friends need to do to get signed how up do, for camp? Not, not can I go to camp, how do I get signed up for camp? Yes. That's a barrier that you can eliminate. Correct. That's the problem that you can solve with and for them. Yeah. You know? And so there's multiple different ways to do that depending on how you do that. Maybe you have a full online process, but I would still have some sort of card or something like that. Yeah. That's actual QR physical, code, simple or, link, yep. or a simple like text. Yeah, and I would put it in both forms. Make sure copy that, paste, share it around. Boom, boom. You can send it because for a lot of kids, they want it on their phone. But to be able to have it quick and easy on the phone, that they can send it to a friend. Yeah, that all of that. If you've got a process to where a kid's parents have to come up to the church to get paperwork to complete a packet and to then, turn it back yeah, in. To, yeah, you've you've caused so many steps at this point that you're gonna have. You're going to have that, what's that phrase in like online shopping, the empty cart? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Where a family goes, oh, yeah, we'll do that. And then it's like, oh, they're hanging out. Get up there. Right. And eventually that parent will just go, no, you're not going to camp. Right, right. Because it's caused them to There's, there's so yeah. much friction. The, the shopper <coughs> friction will create the remorse. Um, but I think those are the things, yeah, some of those you can't fix. If you're four days out, you can't fix those things. So, in the spirit of not panicking, would you mark those things down? Because the thing that you just shared is the thing that I want to end on today. We have to chain the things together that we're doing. Mm -hmm. The best time to start planning for camp next year now. is camp now. And one of the things that you can do is, one, to recalibrate who's here, who enjoyed it, but again, to gather the stories of why camp was meaningful and great. It is so very different when you try to sell camp versus when students share about camp. Both help get kids to attend camp in the summertime. Uh, when you have to sell, it can feel really hard. When students get to share, because at camp, you filmed them. Uh, after camp, you recorded it. And the photos and the stories and the thoughts and the, and the, and the little, like, four-minute docu-series you put together of how Taylor's so softball team came and destroyed at right. camp. Like, tell that story. Tell the story of how it was exciting and fun because sometimes I feel like our own worst enemy is this urgency of, like, I have to fill a spot when the most exciting invite is, you know what, you didn't make it this year, but next year mm -hmm. it's promising to be really awesome. And if you can't come this year, I want you to check it out yeah. for next year. Uh, to, to set up and not just sell what really is happening. Uh, involving others along the way makes it slower. That's important, significant, yeah. but also really key to help share the story beyond just what you have to say, what others are saying about yeah. it. Can I, can I end with this? One of the, uh, there's like a leadership lesson where they, I, they looked at um, World War II planes that would come back from like air raids uh, and they would see like where all they were, you know, shot and all these kind of things. Um, and, you know, and you'd see a lot of like bullet holes uh, in the, you know, the, the main area yeah. of, of the plane. And so when they came back, the thought is, well, this is where these planes that survived, we need to like, put extra, you know, like armor protection, armor yeah, pr yeah, yeah. protection along the middle because this is obviously where they're getting shot. But the reality is all the planes that weren't coming back yeah. were shot in the areas that they didn't see any of the survivor planes. Right, right, right. right? right. It was the wing area. And so in reality, where you need to put your armor is where the planes were getting shot that yeah. weren't coming back. Mm -hmm. Um and I think right now is a good time to really evaluate for next year. What are the things that are happening at camp yeah. or leading up to camp 
that's causing students to not be there. And to be really honest, right? Sometimes we can sugarcoat and there's a good time to celebrate the wins of camp. But there also has to be a real time where we we're honest and we go, man, maybe the facilities of the camp that we go to are causing students to not want to come. Yeah. Maybe, maybe the week's wrong. Maybe the week's maybe, wrong. Maybe right? that is the week that just doesn't line up for yep. our banded football kids. And so we need to evaluate those for next year or the years to come to really be able to say, hey, man, even though it's easy for me and I like these things, maybe it actually doesn't work. Um, and you may have to like find a new place or a new camp or whatever that looks like. And we would really encourage you to do that that works the best for your people.